The Center for the Visualization and Interactivity of Education presents the documentary Martin, or I Aim with My Ears. A man's hand squeezes the trigger of a sports gun. The target with the hits comes to the shooting range. In 1998, I started work here at the regional police force as a telecommunications technician. And even then, when he came here and we were in the process of choosing technicians, we liked the fact that he is so honest and straightforward and had no problem with the staff, so we chose him. Well, I was working here for about a year when in April 1999 there was an accident and I lost my ability to see as a result of it. Vladimir Chinchala, head of the division, speaks. It was a shock for us. It was late in the evening when a colleague called me at home and said that Martin had had an accident and I told him, of course, that this was some kind of bad joke, that it was late and he shouldn't be playing around with me so but he said it was really serious about Martin and that was really true. And when I asked him what had happened, he said, well, we don't know, just that Martin had suffered such and such injury. Roman Ovshovsky, a co-worker, speaks. Of course, he was on sick leave for about a year or thereabouts. And since he was a favorite around here, you might say we got the management here to agree to let us find some other work for him here. So I called and suddenly there was a nationwide telecommunications company here looking for employees for its call center, hotline and so on. Everything looked like they would invite me there for an interview and there would be nothing to hide, but the moment I told the lady at the end of the conversation that I was, in fact, blind, but that I had software that enabled me to do practically everything with the computer, she rather quickly did an about face and said that in this case it would no longer be possible and started to hang up. I again pointed out to her that I had software, that I had all my own equipment, but this lady simply repeated, it won't work, it's impossible, and hung up. So I was happy when a few days later the supervisor from that workplace called me, because I could see that from my first experience that it really wouldn't be quite so easy to find a job. Roman Kochnar, a co-worker, speaks. And so it was somehow agreed to try it, and Martin seized the opportunity, and well, now it's been 10 years or so that he's been working here like this. Ministry of the Interior, Police Force of the Czech Republic, Adamek, good afternoon. First of all, we had to figure out with these guys in what capacity we could employ him. We started inquiring about possibilities and, well, we found out that there exists certain software tools that would allow him to do this job. The text that you see on the monitor, well, this program converts all of it into spoken words. I have my own headset, this is my main gear. This thing here, including the microphone, so I have the callers in one ear here and the speech, the program, in the other one. So I communicate with the caller through this one earpiece and orientate myself in the computer with the other one, looking for all the keys and so forth. Of course, Martin has a huge advantage in the fact that he knows the issue, knows the departments where they can call, and he has a very good memory. After some time he had, you might say, the entire telephone book which the girls had in some data format memorized in his head. When a person really learns everything, it works, and it's also a fact that today I have no problem getting to work by myself, and I don't need to have any assistant for it. Because if a person learns something, then he can manage a host of things by himself without any problems, without outside assistance. Then there is getting around in the building, because even if he knows it, the building, he still had to learn it again. There is always a big risk with him whenever some obstacle appears that is not familiar with. This means that we have to make sure the cleaning lady, to make sure someone doesn't leave something under his legs, desk and so forth. 
I have the center supervisor for this, whose responsibility is to ensure that nothing is left lying around like that. He knows this area so well that sometimes... I took him home a couple of times, like by car, and he told me all the time where we were because he knows it so well, because he could see before and basically things hadn't changed much. There can be a problem with the fact that when something gets moved around here, there were closets here once, someone actually takes him and tells him to be careful about it. He basically takes someone by the shoulder, sometimes doesn't take his walking stick, and like this we go together to lunch, or he has his walking stick in his pocket. He grabs somebody by the shoulder, and we go. And he mostly looks for places where he was before, meaning that he has learned these places. He was there one second time and knows exactly what to look out for. At home, Martin turns on the computer and sits in front of it. I have my own pages which I created in a more or less self-learning process. The idea for it is shooting with an air rifle. He is basically the kind of person that will create something, then comes over here and wants somebody to tell him his opinion, how the design looks, how to apply colors there, and things like this, and maybe I will help him with it. But otherwise, he manages it beautifully. I really have to take my hat off to him. If I feel like reading a book, one of the possibilities is to use a scanner for it, actually scanning the book, always page by page with the help of a program in the computer, which takes the book, or rather the scanned text, and converts it into a normal computer document. And then I can read the page in question thanks to the speech program which I have in the computer. Another hobby, I think that he spends a lot of time on the internet. Shooting is very important for him. He has stayed with it and I think it's the biggest of the hobbies he has. Important is that I train at home, because the distance is the same as the competitive range, which is 10 meters, and here the conditions are right. It's roughly 10 meters from the living room to the kitchen, so I only have to move the desk, chair, I put the gun stand there, clothes, coat, pants, and I can start training. I basically aim with my ears by orientating myself on sound. The higher the tone, the more precise the target is. He also spends a lot of time with the girls, like those from Tiflo Service, where he went to learn English. I went with him there for some time, basically around the galleries and the like. Nothing holds him back. Galleries? Sure, I don't see what's there, but I have this friend who works there as an animator, meaning she's a guide around the gallery, and she describes everything perfectly to me, whatever it is, like some statue or some other such work, and also pictures which she talks about in perfect detail, so that a person is able to get a pretty fair idea about it. The fact that this man is embracing her around her back and her arms, around the neck, around his head, they are basically naked. There is only a piece of cloth there. If 10 years ago, after the accident, somebody had told me all the things I could do and where I would be during these 10 years, and all the things I could manage to do, well, I really wouldn't have believed him and would have taken it as some kind of stupid joke. But in fact, everything was manageable, especially since I don't plan anything for the future, and I let myself be surprised by what more life has to offer. Just because he had an accident doesn't mean he's a leper. Basically, he had an accident. He is disabled and everyone who can somehow help such a person should help him because these people are rewarded by the fact that they will be far more responsible and far better to fulfill the working obligations which this employer requires. This commentary describes the visual perceptions of the previous documentary, which were not spoken about or mentioned in the dialogue. Martin's hits were around the middle of the target. 
he set up and adjusted the gun himself. He wore protective clothing and one glove while shooting. One colleague helped him to set up the target at the shooting range. He gets about on the streets using a white walking stick. He moves about within the workplace without a walking stick for the blind. He works in a large office with seven other colleagues. He has a telephone headset for his left ear and a small earpiece from his computer in his right one. He makes himself some coffee in the kitchen at work. He went to lunch with his colleagues. He took the bus from work and then went to the park. His website address is www.martinadamek.cz. It includes photos from his shooting competitions. At home, he set up a target and prepared the shooting range. He goes to the Gallery of Fine Art with his friend. He and his friend stop to look at the pictures in the gallery. Documentary Credits Appearances by Martin Adamek Roman Kochnar Roman Oshovsky Vladimir Chinchala Mikhaila Holushova The authors would like to thank Czech Post Office, the Gallery of Fine Art in Ostrava, and Ostrava SKKP for their cooperation. Co-workers on the film Jan Golch, Robert Czerny, David Berger, Pavel Lefoman, Tomasz Sokolowski. Camera and Direction, Miroslav Blaha. The Center for the Visualization and Interactivity of Education. Produced by Ragtime Records SRO 2010. The Commentary for the Blind was written by Marek Salaba. Project Audiopopis CZ.